It's been a while since we've had a drama video, but I think it's time to crucify somebody. Every time I make a video talking about the analytics, talking about whether or not we drop a show or not, people get so mad. People absolutely lose their minds. And we have Ravory here, Mr. Rohit Aug. Can you see this, guys? Let's see this. We have Mr. Rohit Aug, and let's see the comments that he left for us to read. Are you ready? What did he say? Where should I put this? Maybe I should put it down here. I'm kind of questioning where I should put my fucking comment. Maybe I should just zoom it out a little bit. Let's do it. Let's read his comments and address point by point of why he has no clue. And he's just mad for the sake of being mad. So this is a response to the video I talked about why we dropped Yosakura. And he says, it's one thing to drop anime for the views, but another to call it selfless. Okay. So he's getting mad at my point calling what I'm doing by abandoning my own desires and adhering to what my community wants and giving them the content they want. That's what I call selfless. And he got triggered over that. So fucking mad that bro wrote, bro wrote an MLA fucking formatted essay, bro. Citations included. Multiple edits. People who don't want to watch the anime reaction will just ignore it and watch the reaction they care about. It doesn't matter if most of your audience doesn't watch it. Already wrong. Already so fucking wrong. He has no understanding of the YouTube algorithm, even though I explain it. Like, I, I should literally be selling courses, by the way. All the secrets that I tell you about how to fucking grow a channel, I give you the blueprint. I give you a strict play-by-play -play formula, and these monkeys still don't get it. The first thing you don't even understand is this part. People who don't want to watch Yuzakura will ignore it, and you're right. They are ignoring it. And you know what that does? It sends bad signals to the YouTube algorithm. For every L video you make, the less confidence YouTube algorithm has. Do you ever question why a lot of reactors... Why a lot of reactors will go out of their way to, let's say, edit two episodes in one reaction? You know why they do that? Quite often, low-performing videos gets bundled up in multiple episode reactions to limit the amount of L's taken. Instead of having multiple L's because of multiple episode reactions, you only take one L. That's one of the strategies to mitigate it. Another one is just taking it strictly Patreon. So immediately, he has no understanding of how the algorithm works and doesn't understand why it's happening and gets mad over it. But, let's, what do you say afterwards? By the same logic, Crunchyroll should just remove the anime, it doesn't get much traffic. Would that also be selfless? You are a retard. Crunchyroll is a platform that people buy subscriptions to buy, you know, uh, watch anime on. I am using the YouTube algorithm to grow as a content creator. You're, you're comparing a platform versus YouTube algorithm strategy. Those are completely independent things that has nothing to do with each other. And the best part is, this guy probably thinks that he's so smart. This guy probably thinks he's so smart, and that's the worst part. I'm not angry at, like, stupid people. I'm angry at stupid people that think they're smart. They're like the perfect Yamauchi clones from Classroom of the Elite. Remember Yamauchi? What does he do? He thinks he's hot shit. He never questions himself. He has no understanding of anything, but is so confident to talk about it. And everyone gets fucking triggered. Because seeing an idiot act like they're smart is just, oh, it's just visceral. Next, what does he say? Making a reaction video is also the lowest effort content. I agree. I heavily agree that reaction content is the lowest form of content. It's the laziest form of content. All I do is turn my webcam on and I improv. But even that is too much of a waste of time for you, even if it doesn't get views. You're right. Why would I spend the limited time I have, if I have eight hours to stream, why would I spend that extra time making content that people don't want to watch, which also fucks me over? Remember, every bad video, less good signals to the algo and things do bad. The unwillingness to spend even the minimal effort if it doesn't make you money is why people say you're being driven by greed. Listen, I think that this guy is new. From the beginning, all I care about is the numbers. All I care about is the growth. I'm trying to give you the best reactions possible and the market will recognize that and everything will simply play it out. I've never ever said that this is due to me loving these animes. I've always tried to make the best product for the market and people simply watch it because it's enjoyable. I think you're completely misunderstanding what the point of this channel is. I've heavily been you know, explaining al algorithms, analytics, and how to grow. Growth is the most important thing. And what does that mean? It means that you're creating content that your audience wants to see. Let's see what he says afterwards. It's also short-sighted, since good anime and complete reactions are more likely to get your views long-term. The funniest shit is this part. He thinks... Look at this shit. 
how are you planning to grow your community if you only cater to the existing audience? Can you tell in this lifetime chart where I stopped covering every weekly show and started to only cater videos to my community? It's very apparent. It's extremely apparent. It's right over here. Up until here, fun fact, this is my second channel. For an entire year, I spent my entire life reacting to weekly seasonal anime, thinking that that's the way to grow, but nothing changed. And after I deleted the channel and started this channel, for pretty much half the lifespan of this channel, a year and a half almost, nothing changed. You know why? Because I did exactly what this guy is saying. Just making every video, no matter what the audience thinks. And guess what that gets you? It gets you fucking nothing. And then I decided to drop the weekly seasonal animes around here and decided to ask my community, what do you want to watch? And then I delivered content based on the community. And every time I uploaded a data live reaction, the algorithm got good signals. They realized that, huh, regular viewers are watching every upload. And then what happens? The views go up because the community starts to grow. This guy has no understanding of the YouTube game, the YouTube algorithm, but he's acting as if he does. How are you planning to grow your community if you cater only to the existing audience? Are you retarded? That is literally the blueprint. You're supposed to try new trends. You're supposed to try new series, but those are tourists. And when tourists comes in, it's your job to make sure that they have a reason to stick around. The reason why a lot of anime reaction channels fall off, even though they get a lot of views for random specific anime, is simply because those are viral hits based on tourist action off of trends. In fact, I'll show you a proof right over here. Can you tell what happened here? Why is there a spike over here on February 16th? What happened here? That was Eminence in Shadow, season one finale. This is the video that is still the number one video in my channel right now. I got lucky as fuck in the finale, but what I didn't know what to do properly was understand that there's new people coming in and try to convert them into regular community members. And because I failed to do that and because I just pumped out a bunch of random anime that no one gave a fuck about, this is what happens. The growth immediately dies off. This is what happens when you get hot for a bit and then you send the algorithm a bunch of shitty signals saying the regular audience isn't watching, then you die. It's really that simple. Now, there's some, a bunch of, and again, this is the funniest part, but I'm sure you'll ignore this and just mold again. Nah. Now, sometimes there's like special people like you that I have to take into my own hands and farm you and make money out of it. But it, the funniest part is they always say this shit. Just ban me, dude. I don't even care. You cared enough to write a fucking full on essay. You spent your own time to get mad and write a fucking essay while my community members also just encounter you with every part. And then they have some kind of like humiliation kink. Just ban me, dude. I don't even care. Bro dragged his cross 30 miles to come to my channel with the fucking nails and hammer and says, please nail me to this fucking cross. What the fuck is going on? Now, I'll read some of the responses after he said. I also agree he should ban me. Don't worry, I already did. To address your other points, editing takes effort and money. He doesn't need to edit it. You're already wrong. In order to appease some sort of defense against co copyright claims, the most important thing of the fair use is that you only use just as necessary of the content. The main reason that my first channel was a failure was because I uploaded the full fucking reaction without, well, trying to give in a little bit of audio and visual cues. When you get a copyright strike for that, there's little to no grounds to really argue because you used every part of the episode. The point of the editing is to shorten it and to use only the necessary bits to have a cause against Counter-Strike appeals. Also, it creates, obviously, a pay-gated incentive on Patreon. This is the whole business business model. So he doesn't understand how this shit works, right? He can upload it with just the time code? No, no one wants to fucking watch timer reactions. That's why most timer reactions fucking are just, they're, they're just failing. It hurts the YouTube algorithm? He doesn't need to upload it on YouTube. It can be Patreon exclusive. But still, that's a time slot that I have to um, invest into. That time slot could have been another Patreon exclusive series that my audience wants to watch. It's still a waste of time to make this specific anime that no one wants to watch except this guy for whatever reason. It's just a dumb idea. Hell, he can even watch the anime off screen and not make a reaction. That should only take 24 minutes. But do you realize that I spent my entire day just fucking streaming and making content? Why the fuck would I watch this shit on my own time if I don't even enjoy it? Yosakura is alright. It's not my favorite anime. I'm gonna watch Captain Tsubasa by myself at nighttime. 
dropping the anime is what make it's what you do when you never liked it and only watched it for views. No, I enjoyed it. But dropping simply means that the audience didn't care about it. And the people that actually watched my Yozakura reactions, if you can genuinely watch my reactions and said that I didn't enjoy it, then you're just fucking lying. If there's an anime I don't enjoy, like Giji Harem, even if the numbers are up, I'll simply drop it. I give my all in every fucking reaction. I actually want to give a fuck about making reactions. The entire point of why I started reactions is because I was watching reactions back in the day and I realized that most of the reactors don't say anything. They just go like this, they just go, oh my God. And there's little to nothing they talk about whenever the hype moment that I personally saw and wanted to see other people's reaction, they never delivered. So I decided, fuck it, I'll do it myself. That's why I want to actually give a fuck about the reactions I'm doing. And if I don't like an anime, I'll simply drop it, even if the viewership is good, just like Giji Harem. Making money is important, I agree. But if it's your if, but it's your most important factor in doing anything, then yes, it is greed. Again, you're so fucking stupid. This whole venture of you know content creation and doing it full time is for money. If I don't have money, then I can't pay my editor. If I don't have money, then I can't pay my bills. Then the whole content creation just fucking stops. This guy is so triggered by this whole component of the greed part. This is why it's so funny because he doesn't actually care about Yozakura. Nothing about this matters. You know why he's saying this shit? Because he's a loser that's completely fucking nothing with his life. And he probably works a shitty job that I can empathize with. Listen, I worked 9 to 5 for 3 years. And then after the 9 to 5, I'd go home and then I'd stream for 5 to 10. And every day for 3 years, I grinded out content creation. So that I could pursue something that I wanted to do rather than what I needed to do. But now you see me just watching anime and crucifying monkeys like you and making a living off of it. More money than your family could probably make in an entire fucking year. Why? Because this is capitalism. I'm fucking sorry. I provide more value through yapping about fucking anime than your entire family ever will. And you get so mad because life is unfair. And I agree, life is unfair. But I can recognize that and I made my own actions to carve out my own piece of the pie. Every day I worked by 9 to 5, I asked myself, why am I working this shit when there's Minecraft kids making my annual salary in a month? This is stupid. And you know what I decided to do? I actually decided to create my own fucking brand and decided to live my own dreams out rather than hating for no fucking reason. Edits. Actually, greed isn't the right term. If it's your only source of income, then sure, it's fine. I would question the decision to use YouTube as the only source of income if you're a small channel, but alas, it's more sad than greed. Again, this guy has no understanding that I've put three fucking years into the grind. Every day, 9 to 5, then 5 to 10, and then have two hours of free time to myself, then I go to bed for three fucking years. I earned every piece of this. You have no idea what it's like to even put in this much effort. And yes, all I do, right? All I really do is just watch anime and talk about it. It is extremely low effort, but you still have to do it every day. You still have to show up every day. No one cares if you're sick. No one cares if some bad shit happened in your life. Deliver the content, entertain the audience. That is my obligation to deliver. And I always do that. And in fact, through the first year of content creation, when I knew nothing about what I was doing, I grinded and I grinded and I got some modicum of success. By the end of year one, I got to almost 2,000 subs and I was so happy. Finally, things were starting to look up. And you know what happened then? Copyright strikes happened. Because again, I didn't fucking edit my content the way I'm doing it now. I edited it just like the way that you wanted to do. And what happened? I made the active decision to delete my channel. Something that I poured my heart and soul and sweat and tears into for an entire year. I killed it because I knew that this is the way that I need to move forward. If I can be successful in YouTube, if I truly can be successful, then I don't need this first channel. I can simply restart and be better. But I bet you could never do something like that. I bet you've never put in this much effort into something your entire life. Yes, it's silly. This is the YouTube channel. I'm just watching anime and laughing at bald people. But you still have to do it every fucking day. And you have to obsess about it. I did that for an entire fucking year while holding down a day job. And then I deleted it. And then I restarted it. And after two years, I'm doing way better than I ever was. I guarantee you, these monkeys could never relate. They have never accomplished anything. They only see, you know, through this jealous lens of other people succeeding without understanding what took to actually get there. Another edit. I guess I should clarify that watching anime with money being the main motivation is what finds sad and off-putting. No, you don't find it sad and off-putting. You find it very unfair in life. You don't know how to process your feelings, so let me write it out for you. This world is a fucked up place. You can spend your entire life, your entire career, 
trying to climb the corporate ladder and the amount of money won't even be half the shit that content creators make because this is a fucking unfair world. But to then attack other people and get mad just because your life sucks and then you realize that, yeah, life is fucking unfair. This guy is just watching anime and making so much money and is actually living the dream and has so much flexibility while I have to do my shitty fucking job. Listen, life is unfair. But remember what I said? I recognize that and I decided to actually make my own opportunity. I've made my own luck. I don't see your ass doing anything. Having a regular job for the purpose of money is totally fine. Why? See this part? See this part? This is the most condemning evidence right over here. He's mad that money is the main motivation, but it's not when I actually have a day job. What does that mean? He wants me to suffer just like him. This is a crab bucket mentality. What does a crab bucket mentality mean? When a crab is in a bucket and is trying to escape out of the barrel, the other crabs don't want that. They pull him down. Misery loves company. This guy's issue is not with me. It's with his himself. It's his own lack of action. It's his own lack of career ambition. You should actually try to do something with your life, but here you are wasting your time watching someone that watches anime online, a random fucking dude, and going on an entire fucking rant about this shit, about how your life sucks and my life is amazing. And here's another part. And I think that's pretty much it, right? And I think that's pretty much it. And I banned him at this point. These are just losers. These are genuinely just fucking losers that don't even know why they're mad. I have to actually give them a therapy session and break down how they're feeling. At the end of the day, this has nothing to do about Mission Yozakura. It has nothing to do with me trying to understand my audience and give them the content they want. Because that's what you have to do to fucking form a community. Do you think that I'm going to listen to a random commenter that's never created content, that's never built anything, and take their advice when I literally have the analytics? Listen. I'm not trying to be egotistical. I'm not trying to be narcissistic. All I've done through my, my entire content creation career is put my, head, put my head down and grind. And suddenly, I'm getting the success that I finally wanted. And it's still going. I have a winning formula. And it's going to keep fucking growing. So then, what should I do? Should I listen to some random monkey that has no understanding of the YouTube algorithm and is just mad that I'm making more money than him by just watching anime in my fucking apartment? No. These are just jealous, insecure monkeys that have nothing better to do. And here's the best part. You will spend the rest of your life being closed-minded without understanding how life works and be mad. In two, three, five years, I'm going to be even bigger. I'm going to be even bigger, making even better content. And you're going to be in the same fucking spot being mad, probably commenting on my channel without realizing that you're banned. But this is the best part about content creation. I don't have to take their bullshit anymore. Before, when I was working jobs I hated, I'd have to, you know, be nice to the customers. But the beauty about content creation is that I can just crucify these monkeys, man. At this point, I feel like you guys should pay me for these kind of, you know, roasts. I feel like some people have developed this humiliation kink and they want to get crucified, man. It's actually pathetic.